We're enjoying the sights and sounds of a new season. Not just a new season on KYD, but a new season of life, now that it's just the two of us. I'm supposed to have a matter baby here. <laughs> Listen. Just play along. Listen. Just play along. Is this supposed to have a matter baby? What's the matter baby? Nothing, baby. What's the matter with you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the kids may leave the house, but the dad jokes stay forever. Oh. In the past two episodes, we explored Rome, the charming community of Alberobello, the stunning hill town of Assisi. And now it's time to connect with our friends for some cooking and laughs. I had no idea you were such a good chef, Tony. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't either, by the way. But I am, by the way. Are we done? Yeah, no. We didn't, we didn't just learn, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. We learned why we're doing it so we can put together a flavor profile instead of a recipe. In this episode, we'll be picking up Tony and Krista north of Rome and making our way to La Tavola Marche where you'll learn the secrets to making the very best pasta. But getting there had some challenges. Hey, before we um, hunt for some truffles, do you think we could do a muffler repair? <laughs> <laughs> but before Mark spends time with Bill and Tony, he needs to be in the right state of mind. Tony, you come in. Don't. Oh man, this is kind of handy having you around. Yeah. This is Why great. Exactly. Dude, who knew I was, was going to ride a clown car today? <laughs> <laughs> you should have guessed. How's it going? Good, man. Yeah. It's been a great trip. Has it? It's been fantastic. What would you think of Rome? I love it. you, Trish? Yeah. As if you don't have enough stuff back there? I, I love Rome, actually. Did you? It was great. We had a great time. Well, because you're the navigator. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm telling you, I've seen this movie before. It doesn't end well. That's bad. That's bad. Well, that's a pretty big. That's bad. Yeah, that is. That's a pretty big for this kind of car. It's a Fiesta, please. Excuse me. <laughs> wow. Can you get on spot me? No. All right, look at that. See that? Look. Yeah, he's right. It's, it's, it's up We're there. We're going to get there. It's just yeah. not the correct way. Yeah. Hey! Hey! We did it! Aww. We made it. Mark. Mark. Hashtag Ford Fiesta. <laughs> <laughs> After so many years, I know. It's crazy. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> What's Wendy's husband's name? Bill. Bill. Bill? Yes. They got here just a little bit ago. Oh, they did? They are zonked. Oh, really? Oh, so sure. they were like, we're taking a nap. We're going to relax. Oh, well, just bit. show me where so. they are. I'd like to wake Bill up right <laughs> now. So Jason and I live in the little house right here. Oh wow. If you need anything and can't find us, just ring this bell and we'll kind of pop out That's... wherever we may be. I want one of those. <laughs> I want one of those. Can I, I call it. you whenever I, I want? Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. In. Oh how cute. Pop this. Oh my goodness. We got the garden below. Oh wow. <laughs> Incredible. When'd you wake up? Hey, can we run with you? I don't even know. I don't even know what day it is right now. <laughs> Come on, how you doing? Hey, Mark and Krista. Krista, welcome everyone. Jason. Yes. I'm Jason. 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 Please, you awesome. In the States, if you this is 500 years old, huh? Is that what yeah. it is? Did you get the scoop? She said that, that the, the oldest part of the house is 500 years old, and then the addition on the house is 300 years old. Wow. wow. That's crazy. I know. Incredible. Crazy. Oh, you guys, since everyone's here, let's yeah. chat for a second. Oh. A few plans have changed, oh. but it's a good thing. Okay, so okay. tonight, welcome. This is Ashley. She and her husband, Jason, own La Tavola Marche, an agriturismo located in the Marche region of Italy. You may know that KYD started out as a podcast, and that's when I interviewed Ashley in 2016, episode number 82. Thought the more people I tell we're moving, the more people I tell we're doing this, even if they look at us like we're crazy. An American couple moving to Italy to teach Italian food at a cooking <laughs> school? Uh, oh, oh, good luck with that. We had to believe in each other and our plan more than anyone else. They've now been in Italy for 16 years, hosting guests to a unique experience in a small mountain town. 
Our itinerary included learning about cheese and prosciutto, visiting the charming town of Piopico to party with the locals at their annual polenta festival, and we even entered an ugly contest. We are the champions of Club de Bruti, which is the ugly club we are proud members of. So if any of you get the chance, you will be evaluated on your ugliness. And you have to go in sit in a chair with the ugly different from how I was trained to cook in New York, which was in New York, you pick up the phone, you order an ingredient any time of the year from anywhere in the world, it arrives in your kitchen and you do what you want. Here is the exact opposite. You look around you and you build the menu around the ingredients that are available at that time. So when you go home, it's going to change into autumn. You need to understand the fundamentals of what we're doing and then be able to change these recipes to adapt to the season. Because what we're doing today, for instance, roasting little beautiful Dattarini tomatoes, that's it, that's the end of them. We won't be able to do this again. But the idea of what we're doing, so when you go home, instead of roasting little tomatoes to make a pasta sauce, why can't you roast some vegetables and make a pasta sauce out? But the idea is going to be the same. All right, so we're gonna talk about technique. Today is not about staring at a recipe card. There's no recipe to these things. Oh. It's cut the tomato, <laughs> cut the tomato, put salt and pepper on it, olive oil, and eat the tomato. I mean, that's really the Italian countryside cooking. It's very, very simple. Today is about doing, tasting, smelling, understanding. A bit of water. So check it out. Mine's too dry. I'm gonna take. If I had, if we were in the kitchen, I'd just go to the sink. A little bit of water in my hand, and that's it. Today is truly a labor of love. We're making semolina orecchietti, a pasta that originates in the streets of Puglia. Orecchi means ear, and ette means small, and that's where we're making small ears. But definitely not with the precision and speed of the ladies from Puglia. When it comes to pasta, Italians and Americans have a much different approach. In North America, pasta is just a vehicle to get the sauce to your mouth, right? Here it's different. It's the opposite. The pasta is the dish, the sauce is the condiment. And when it comes to making pasta, Jason has one mantra. We are not making pastry. We are not making pastry. We are not making pastry. So you're going to look at this and be like, it's it's water. I'm an Italian not. Yup, that's what you're going to think to yourself immediately is, I need more water. You do not need more water. You don't need more water until everything comes together and you see that there's really still flour on the board, right? And we're gonna let this rest. This needs to rest 30 to 45 minutes up to all day. Wow. Normally, I, well, there's nothing in it. Like, like uh, it just sits on the counter. Normally, I make the dough in the morning uh, when Ashley's doing breakfast and I'll just leave it on the counter until I'm ready to roll it out in the heat. Huh. But it must rest, it must relax. Mm -hmm. You do not let it relax, you will go to roll it out and it will just keep shrink, look, it will just keep shrinking back. And then the blade right there. So one more time, a nice little marshmallow square, blade side out, Pulling it towards you with good pressure as it's still attached. Put your finger there in the middle and you can use your knife if you want. Pop it open right there. Little ear.
Leroy, what are you doing? Are you hanging out on your back, Leroy? Are you hanging out on your back, Leroy? <laughs> yes. He just spent like, I don't know, an hour? Yes. Just making every single little ear by hand. <laughs> and so now we're gonna go put it together with beautiful sauce. Now you can see there's not a ton of olive oil in here because most of this is pasta water or a ton mm -hmm. of water. water. Now I did that on purpose because we used the cooking olive oil for the oven because there's no sense in putting the good olive oil into that oven with the tomatoes. Yeah. Now we're gonna finish with the good olive oil. Okay, so we're gonna add in a little bit of prosciutto or lonzo, just a, just a little bit, and a little bit of basil. This is talking about cooking pasta. The Italians, whether they're cooking pasta for two people, you go to a festival and there's 2,000, the pasta always comes out perfectly cooked. It's because they do a few things different. They're excellent at cooking pasta because it's part of their culture. Let's talk about the things they do different. One, water, lots of water. You cannot cook pasta in too much water. You can definitely cook it in too little. You don't have to get an expensive pot. You just have to get a big pot. And I know this, is, it doesn't have to be stainless steel. You can do it in aluminum, go to the camping store or the, the hardware store, pot. restaurant supply, just get a big pot. You never know when you get a leak in the roof or yeah. you need to wash a baby or who knows what. <laughs> Having a or good a pot around is never a bad idea. Now this is an exaggeration, but for two people, I'm still using my biggest pot. Okay. For two people, okay. right? Lots of water. Number two, salt. We need to salt the water as the sea tastes. We put no salt in the pasta, right? So we must salt the water as the wow. sea tastes. How do you know? Add some salt, taste it. If it tastes like a mouth of seawater, you're there. Why? Two reasons. One, we need to flavor the pasta. And number two, density. Denser water, water with salt, boils at a higher temperature. Why also a big pot is advantageous? for the drop in temperature because normally your stove at home is not a professional stove. It doesn't put out the amount of energy that, that a restaurant stove would be. So how do we combine about that problem? Volume. You have a huge volume of water and you add one box of pasta, the drop in temperature will be less. Mm. The water will come back up to temperature quicker, right? So you can either buy a new stove or just get a big pot, oh, right? Generous. Okay, so lots of water, lots of salted water and from the pot to the Man. Don't know in Austria, Germany, but in North America, we would take this pot over to the sink, we would pour it through the pasta, the colander, and then we would put the naked pasta on the plate and then the sauce over the top. Not here. We go from the pot to the pan with the sauce. We take the pasta out when it's 20, 30 seconds away from actually being cooked. We keep on cooking the pasta in the pan. That's why you'll see them always add a ladle of pasta water because the pasta will continue to absorb liquid. Liquid being sauce and water. And we have to account for that absorption. So you have to keep the water in the pan. He's ruined me by the way. I can never go back to the States and eat pasta again. <laughs> fantastic, tomatoes, fantastic. A tiny bit of garlic. Um, I add, we, you saw we added what? 10, eight slices of that. Fantastic. That's it. To the table, let's do this. Woo! I'm leading the train on this. Wow. Hmm. Right over here on this Look side. Look beautiful. Oh my God. Look who's coming. Look who's coming. Leroy's coming. Hi, Leroy. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> So good. I see you guys are ready for the ugly co the ugly competition tonight. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm this I was born. I was born ready. <laughs> <laughs> you talking ugly competition? I was born ready. <laughs> I'm afraid they're gonna say you, sir. You cannot enter the contest. You, you cannot enter the contest. Uh, but this guy over here, can you please follow me? <laughs> I mean, I'm, just, it's, I'm really torn because I'm, it's, it's, I'm really torn because I'm so competitive. <laughs> but then sometimes you go, wow. Is there any chance Wendy? Wendy may be the most competitive in the group. Is there yeah. any chance that the last minute she might be like, I've got just to comes win this? Just down here, black summer tooth. <laughs> black summer tooth. You know? I mean, I say it wouldn't put it past her because she loves to win. She does. But so but I think this is one contest that she's gonna, she's probably up there just banging her head against the wall. What am I gonna do?
I'm coming down. I went up the hill and then I met some 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 guys with a drone and I was talking to them about sharing their drone footage. I'll be right down. Okay, I'll see you in a second. Bye. If the drone footage in this town was really, really, really good, he took Rudy it. Rudy is ugly and Italian and Tony doesn't have to do a thing. <laughs> <laughs> be you, Tony. Be you. Be you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna give the evaluation to the men and we'll say what, how the women are as well. Oh! Whoa! Whoa. 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 It's time for dinner then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so maybe in a few years you'll get better looking. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, Tony. Oh, 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 oh look at that, look at that. Hey. Should you ask him if you should even do this? I should, right. Per il signor Tony. Insomma, era un bel ragazzo, eh? Oh, he's a good looking guy, he said. Oh! Did you get that on camera? He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, My name is... Are you brothers? Anthony. Tony. No! Marco. 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 I can't believe he said you were good looking. Yeah, I, I mean, told you. I told you this a long time ago. You never listened to me. You never listened. It was the name. <laughs> it's the name. That Tony. Very cool. Wait, Tony. Oh, Since he said Tony, they're like, oh, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. Come on, Look at this. Look at this. Bill. <laughs> what you think about, you create. Tony got handsome. He's like, I don't even know how to judge him. He's handsome. <laughs> but he's short. <laughs> she said you were insufficient. I feel like they dodged a bullet with the insufficient <laughs> yes, thing. Yes. That could have been totally. a little awkward. That could have been that's, really That's one awkward. of those things that you think is going to be a lot of fun until it's not. <laughs> until it's not. Did you tell everyone that we're here for a polenta festival? No. We're here for a polenta festival. Okay. And so everybody does their polenta a different way. Okay. And we're going to see them stirring in cauldrons. Okay. And um, right now, we're just going to go walk into a restaurant. I don't even know what's going to happen, but it's so fun. And the funny thing is, all the music is English, but with an Italian accent. Yes. yes. It's awesome. this trip <laughs> there's always another amazing thing that's about to happen they're not ranked differently they're just amazing 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 because it's Italy yeah so um anyway so we're going to Florence mm -hmm. and we um, are kind of in a rush because we need to drop off two rental cars make our way back into the city check in when you check in with an Airbnb they want to see your passport you got to fill out some forms and then we're trying to make a tour it's mm -hmm. like a three-hour walking tour we're gonna see the Duomo mm -hmm. we're gonna go see David and <laughs> we're gonna go see oh the birth of Venus oh yes wow. I had so, no idea yeah it's very exciting All right. so we've got about a two and a half hour drive to get into Florence and as Trish said we're gonna have to drop off the cars and the rentals and things like this because we're not gonna need the cars in Florence and then we're gonna get transportation to Cinque Terre and then we're not gonna need a car there for a few days so we'll just forego the car rental but I'm gonna miss my freedom machine so uh, if I were to do this all over again I would just have the car the whole time and figure that out and deal with the parking, which really isn't a big problem. And um, that way you know that you have some, you know, if you do expand, you have a little bit more luggage, then you know you've always got a place to keep it. Um, but anyway, we'll see how this goes in the next few days. Um, I've really kind of enjoyed being off the beaten path and getting kind of a true experience and stumbling across things and not having expectations. 
But um, at the same time, you have to balance that with the fact that there are museums and there are things in these cities that, that if you're coming out to Italy, you probably want to experience too. So it's finding the balance. Personally, just like traveling in the States, it's kind of nice to get to the point that you've checked all the stuff that you're supposed to do. You've checked all that off your list so that you can go, okay, I've done that, and then go do the stuff that you'd like to do. The stuff you're supposed to do, it, it is worthwhile, but it can be expensive or a little aggravating or touristy or crowded or whatever. It, it comes with some, some cons, but um, you, know, you can't go all this way without seeing it. You ready? I am ready. Roll up, roll out, rawhide. I think we sang that song earlier. Let's go. Yes. Oh, sorry. When, when you were when you were drinking coffee, I I was loading up the car. Well, that's great. Perfect. I was ready five minutes ago. But <laughs> This. You can, I'm sure. This is pretty cool. You need some work and you don't like old things. And But but is there and a this point? Thing, I might make an exception because the foundation seems good. And it it's is. made of stone and it's been here for 500 years. It is historic. <laughs> 500 years. Think about the tools that they made this way. I mean, just the, just the timbers and the stone and the mortar they, they couldn't go down to home depot and get a bag of mortar you no, know they had a I sure can but look who tried to escape out of here why would this used to be <laughs> seriously <laughs> you go ahead i'll get the camera <laughs> <laughs> hello it's cold trish it's it's okay you can come oh wow look at this so this is the front door oh, what else does it cost and the steps go up there like that this is crazy Needs a little work, but good bones. <laughs> a lot of bones. Wow, the fireplace. Was Trish coming? Oh, that was a bat. No, it was a yeah, I swear, right in there. Where you see that bat? I don't see it. I think he went up on the ceiling. Maybe he went up that hole. Well, there he is. I see You do? No. Oh yeah, there he is. Yeah. Oh wow, it's a ladder? Yeah. God, it's crazy. It's a big home, isn't it? Yeah. I want to buy it. <laughs> but you guys, it's a big project. It's a little bit of a fixer up. The floor is really unlevel. Is it? You can see, yeah, you can see how it's giving out. I don't know if I should walk up there or not. Oh, I saw another bat. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh God, they're all over. <laughs> really? They're all over, I swear. There's a million of them. Really? Yes. God, look at the ceiling though. I know. The ceiling is gorgeous. I know it is. Look at that. I'm telling you it's a fixer-upper, but I think we can make it work. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I've never, I've never seen you like an old thing.